Hi, everybody. Today for our Facebook video, we are talking about death during COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Um, specifically, what sort of the emotional and spiritual impact has been, not just related to when somebody passes from COVID-19, but when somebody passes just during COVID-19. It's been a totally different experience. And I'm joined today by the Reverend Brian Madison, who's a chaplain for Hospice of the Chesapeake, and with Amy Stapleton, who is the bereavement manager for the Chesapeake Life Center at Hospice of the Chesapeake. So thank you guys both for coming and talking about this really strange time that we are all living in and the experience of when someone's actually passing and how that has changed during COVID-19. Um, Brian, I think I want to start with you and talk a little bit about what your experience has been these last few weeks with COVID-19 and, and being there and family's experiences at the end of life. Well, some of the spiritual aspects that have been experienced uh, in my experience during this pandemic are simply families not being able to be with their loved one when they're transitioning. And that's one of the hard things that, that, that I have to deal with, with uh, taking away some anxiety, taking away, uh, putting some justification as to why they have to do things the way they have to do them when they just don't understand it, you know. Um, is uh, other faith traditions. They're not being able to fully practice their faith tradition for a funeral or uh, in my particular faith, um, we do celebrations of life. And you're not able to gather as a family and you're not able to have that closure that uh, comes from a celebration of life or a funeral because a lot of times you get together and, you know, in the funeral, you see loved ones, you see friends, you see families, and you're able to share stories and you're able to share emotional moments and hug each other and, and just, just provide comfort toward one another. And you're not able to do that in this current pandemic because you have gathering restrictions. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really hard. I mean, even to the point where, you know, a lot of times after the uh, funeral or the celebration of life, there's a repast and they're able to share a meal together. And that's when it really, people really start to open up toward one another and share experiences and stories. And they're just not able to do that during these current restrictions. Yeah, that's, that's, just, that's just been such a, a hard element and something I think nobody was really thinking about as far as a, a, one of the things that would be happening during this time period. Amy, what about you? I, I know you deal a lot with, with after the person has died what's been what's been the emotional sort of component going on well I really you know want to echo what Brian's saying is when people call us for bereavement support after a loss there's a a, a fear um, almost that they've somehow missed something so critical so um, important that they haven't been able to give their loved one at a time of death and um, that leaves kind of some unresolved grief. It definitely impacts not just people's mourning, but their ongoing grief, kind of regretting that they weren't able to be there. Maybe things were left unsaid. Maybe they weren't able to honor their loved one's wishes, that sort of thing. And in all honesty, you know, people are angry. It's not that they're angry at, at us or angry at a hospital. They're angry at a situation that, that really they've had no control over. Um, and, you know, the rituals of mourning are so culturally significant right. and, and throughout various cultures of the world, whether it's a burial practice or just the rituals of, of goodbye. And as Brian said, when we don't have those, it leaves us feeling incomplete. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. So, so grief rituals, and, and I'll let either of you jump in. What, what are some of those sort of things that we as a, you know, as people do during, after the loss of someone from death? If, if either of you could speak to that. Well, again, you, one of the things that, that normally gets me through or gets um, a family through is 
their spirituality and again that has nothing to do with religion <laughs> it has to do with how they connect with one another how they connect with something outside of themselves and that provide helps them to 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 find some sort of comfort or reason or or some way to 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 help them to transition from grief to getting through to the next day okay and that again is being affected by these restrictions because a lot of times it's it's the gathering of families it's the gathering of friends it's it's you know mechanisms that that are not able to be enacted upon because of these restrictions and so what i would suggest to people is that um find something that occupies your mind totally um there's several different things that you can do to 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 do these grief to get through grief is to number one you can focus on your faith you can focus on your spirituality you can read books spiritual books or non-spiritual books you can find music or uh, you can find anything that occupies your mind to the point where you're able to kind of release yeah and let things go yeah and go ahead and you know so much about rituals are about what moves us kind of beyond words and the power of community and rituals is that's where we we bear each other's burdens that's when we help each other remember that's when we share the stories of our loved ones and that can still be done albeit just in a different way so a lot of families are having zoom calls where they get together and um, maybe they share a picture and a story of their loved one or I know some families have asked that people send them letters or memories um, of maybe what they wish they would have been able to say to their loved one as they transitioned. Um, so there are other rituals that just takes a different form these days. Right. It just has to be kind of done creatively or thinking a little bit outside the box and coming up with some different different ways. So one of the, the other things that I think makes this complicated is the postponement of having to do the services, whether it's the memorial service, but those things that kind of happened in you know, succession are now having to be, we can't get together because of social distancing and, and restrictions. We're having to postpone that. Have, have either of you, has that impacted or have you seen anything or talked to anybody about the weight of that as well? Yeah, that's certainly been a reality for many people that we're, we're hearing from these days um, that they weren't able to, you know, be able actually they weren't able to gather at all in the same ways that they had intended or planned um, sometimes people are only being allowed to have one person at a graveside or um, to have to see their person at the morgue or at a funeral home and not in the conditions that they had thought or imagined um, for their loved one in these days so they're there's kind of a, an unreal nature to it. Um, and it makes those, those rituals of mourning that much harder um, to do it in isolation. Yes. And like, um, it's just a hard time in a sense that again, there, there's no closure in a lot of, in a lot of ways because you've had to postpone a service. You have to, put things aside that normally would help you in the grief process. Things that, that, that you know, the gathering of families, the, 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 the sharing of, 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 of comfort. And, and even though you, you're able to do it, you know, through social media with Zoom and things of that nature, it's not the same as having someone actually give you a hug. Mm -hmm. And again, as I spoke about family members are forced to, to make decisions, hard decisions, because of these COVID restrictions when you have a loved one who can't have the service, but they can't keep the body, so they have to have it cremated, and that may be against their loved one's wishes, but it's something that they have to do in order to have a service at a later date. 
and then the graveside services where there's only one or two people allowed. Then you have, uh, I've had a problem where one funeral home decided not to provide services after a patient, uh, after the family of a patient had already made arrangements. Um, so that's, it just makes a really difficult time even that much more challenging. Like that's, that's the bottom line is that folks are dealing with a really hard time that's even harder. You guys mentioned, you both mentioned a couple of, of ways that might be helpful to think things through differently or, or things that could be, you know, used for coping. Did you have any other suggestions or things that you're sharing with people to kind of help them get through, you know, this really difficult time? Amy, did you have something that you've... Yeah, I've heard of, um, of people being really creative and inventive. One of my favorites is working with a family now who decided that they would all cook their mom's favorite meal. Um, and so they replicated it to the best of their ability, something that our mom would make, and they all had a meal together over Zoom. And I think that's a, a beautiful tribute um, to their mother and certainly helped them feel connected. I've heard of people planting trees um, and lighting candles, again, sharing stories via Zoom, writing people, writing letters and sending them you know, things that maybe would have been said at a funeral, sending those on and sharing them with their loved ones. Um, you know, pictures, again, are very powerful. So I've seen families kind of come together, even cousins, extended family members, go through pictures and share them with one another. Um, and that's a just a beautiful way to honor um, those who have died. Yeah, that's awesome. How about, Brian, any other suggestions? Well, one of the things that uh, one of my uh, families was doing was modeling um, what's going on with the, the celebrations of some people who are having birthday parades. Okay. And what they decided to do was go by um, the house where their parents lived because one parent is still living. And they were just going to ride by and wave and have signs and things of that nature. And I thought that was pretty cool. That's really cool. That's a great way to sort of, you know, I think it's it, trying to make it, trying to make it real and still make it, you know, something that we are honoring and, and celebrating and remembering. I think any way that we can, can creatively come up with doing that helps with, sounds like helps with the, with the process of, of the loss. How about any other resources? Are there any um, places, Amy, maybe that you're directing people to check out or tap into? Yeah, there are certainly some free resources available online. Um, David, Kels David Kelsler at grief.com has a variety of free resources, videos for people. I know that there are several Facebook groups um, there is a, a multi-faith kind of clergy group that is available to help people kind of plan a service, if you will, during these times virtually. Um, so I think there are resources out there for people. And certainly we at the Chesapeake Life Center and Hospice of the Chesapeake hope that people will, will reach out to us as well. Your resource as well. Brian, did you have any other resources that, that you're familiar with? I would... Um advise those who are connected with a faith community and connected with a local church to reach out to your church because a lot of them are still operating. It's just that they're not physically there, but they, you know, they're operating remotely. So those services that are, are that were once there or that are there currently uh, are still functioning. So, you know, take advantage of that. Yeah, that's true. Well, not an easy topic, but I really, really appreciate both of you all taking time to, to talk about it and offer suggestions for how we can sort of deal with what we have and, and work through these difficult times. So thank you both. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Brian. Take thank care. You. I also want to make sure I do thank the John and Kathy Belcher Institute for their generous support of programs for Hospice of the Chesapeake. Thanks, guys.